Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Russia has resumed pumping gas to Europe through its biggest pipeline after warnings it could curb or halt supplies altogether. The Nord Stream 1 pipeline restarted following a 10-day maintenance break, but at a reduced level. On Wednesday, the European Commission urged countries to cut gas use by 15% over the next seven months in case Russia switched off Europe's supply. Russia supplied Europe with 40% of its natural gas last year. Germany was the continent's largest importer in 2020, but has reduced its dependence on Russian gas from 55% to 35%. Eventually, it wants to stop using gas from Russia altogether. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February sent wholesale gas prices soaring in Europe with a knock-on impact on consumer energy bills. Two districts of Ukraine's eastern city of Kharkiv have been shelled by Russian forces. That's according to the regional prosecutor's office, adding that three people were killed and 23 wounded. According to the statement posted by the office, a public transport stop near the market in the northeast of the city was shelled at 9.30 a.m. local time. Three people were killed and 20 wounded. On Wednesday, a 13-year-old boy was killed by a Russian missile strike. Kharkiv, Ukraine's second biggest city, resisted a Russian assault that reached its outskirts in the first two months of the invasion, but has experienced almost daily shelling over the past month after a period of relative calm. Temperatures may have cooled in France and the UK, but wildfires continue to rage across Europe, where a heat wave has intensified drought conditions. Firefighters are still tackling blazes in Greece, Spain and Italy. Video released by a volunteer firefighting team here showing the reality of fighting a wildfire in Greece. Authorities said the wildfire north of the capital is now under control. Smoke billowed over the forests of Slovenia and Albania as Europe's heat waves spread northeast. In Spain, a military emergency unit struggled with fires, driving by roads surrounded by flames and making efforts overnight to control the fires. A year and a half after he was appointed as Italy's unelected head of a unity government, Mario Draghi has resigned as Prime Minister. He received a lengthy round of applause from politicians in the lower house of parliament as he prepared to announce his intention to resign. He told President Sergio Mattarella he was standing down after three parties in his government refused to back him in a confidence vote the night before. Mr Draghi was a popular choice as Prime Minister, dubbed Super Mario for his handling of the Eurozone crisis as head of the European Central Bank. Sri Lanka's Ranil Wickremesinghe has been sworn in as President amid hopes that he will pull the country out of its economic suffering. The 73-year-old took his oath at the tightly guarded parliamentary complex. Mr Wickram Singer, the former Prime Minister, is seen as deeply unpopular with the public, but some protesters have said they will give him a chance. Sri Lanka has seen months of mass unrest over the economic crisis in the country. Tornadoes in China's eastern Jiangsu province have killed one person and injured at least 25 as waves of extreme weather and heat persist across the country. In Jiangsu's Yangchen city, a tornado damaged houses and brought transmission towers crashing to the ground, disrupting the power supply to 5,800 households. Many Chinese cities have broken new records for high temperatures over the past few weeks as scorching heat and contrasting relentless rains wreaked havoc. And finally, the world's oldest known male giant panda under human care has died aged 35. That's the equivalent of 105 years for humans. Named An An, his health had showed steady signs of deterioration over the past few weeks, with his food intake declining until he finally stopped eating. He had lived at a marine and animal facility since 1999. An An and Jia Jia, the world's oldest female giant panda, who died in 2016 at 38 years old, were gifts from the Chinese government. A condolences booth and flowers were set up outside the enclosure. Visitors also streamed in to look at Anna Ann's former enclosure, where a memorial board and a bouquet of flowers were placed in a play area the panda frequented. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.